Well, our first guest is now ready. He's with us, Olari Waju Suraj, Executive Director, Human and Environmental Development Agency. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Thank you, Doctor. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Good morning. Well, very quickly, this report uh, that was presented by uh, Dr. Benga right. Odoton, alleging that uh, 10 former uh, Nigerian governors have uh, properties worth about 36 billion uh, pounds in the UK alone, and that uh, we have uh, former uh, law enforcement officers from Nigeria having up to about 216 properties in uh, Dubai. But the report did not no. attach names uh, to the owners of these uh, properties. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole concern is about uh, illicit uh, financial flow. But what recommendations do you have in that report about how Nigeria can check this uh, outflow of uh, illicit uh, money? Um, the, recommended, the recommendations really are quite many. Uh, and I should just confirm uh, that the uh, property in London uh, attributed to about 10, um, I should say former governors uh, and also some serving senators. Uh, is about 56 million pounds, uh, just tough, 10 of them. Uh, there are quite a lot or more uh, there, but the ones that are actually uh, confirmed with evidence and also property record from the UK system are the ones that we're talking about. And the ones in Dubai, even though we're talking about 800 properties in Dubai, you know, uh, that are associated with politically exposed persons, uh, uh, their cronies and also their fronts and proxies. Uh, even uh, a, a judge uh, in, in the judiciary is also part of this, former governor, serving governors. It's about 800. But the law enforcement, non law enforcement officers are about 216. And that is the constituency with the IS, when you consider the number of people involved, 13 of them associated with about 216 properties. Uh, and that would tell you, you know, for either we want to admit it or not, we want to uh, assume it, is also responsible for the state of insecurity that we have been plunged into. Uh, if the money that would have equipped the security agencies uh, is already found in the property market of the UAE, uh, then you can understand why uh, there would be this level of you know, failure in terms of taming insecurity. Uh, and part of the recommendations are uh, the fact that not only just Nigeria, uh, these two countries, the UK and the UAE, uh, would have to come out clean uh, with the revelation that we have. Uh, we have to come out clean by ensuring that we don't have toxic funds uh, revolving within either their financial or property market in their system. And if there is the old convention and agreement around the issue of uh, illicit financial flow uh, and the uncac recognition of the need for recovery of illicit assets within the system and return of the, those funds or uh, assets to the country of origin, there's a need for those two countries to start acting, uh, not even later, but with immediate effect. Uh, the system here is the fact that also I, I, the government is the last that I want to go to. I mean, that's the politically elite, uh, the serving government, the coming government and the previous. It is a class uh, and you wouldn't expect them. They are all involved, the current, the serving and the previous. So if we're assuming that there's going to be the saint among the political class to do the right thing, uh, then we might actually uh, be chasing shadows. So it, it is about us. Uh, identifying and investigating uh, the background of some of our politically exposed persons uh, and the people that are associated with them, uh, and also querying their source of wealth. Uh, because it is not just sufficient for us to assume and also admit that the moment you get into office, uh, it should be an avenue for uh, personal enrichment uh, to the extent of having properties in London, Dubai, uh, I heard it is also really horrible in South Africa uh, presently. The same thing in Gambia and Sierra Leone, uh, how Nigerians are becoming owners of properties in this country. Uh, so the citizens and the, the media and the civil society must also get as much as possible angry with some of these revelations. 
and take it forward to ensure that we query the intention of uh, the system in UK and the UAE, uh, the Nigerian government and the law enforcement agencies on their commitment and genuine commitment for that matter uh, to the issue of um, not just the fight against corruption, uh, but the recovery of illicit assets. What is the thinking? I'm asking you, I'm sorry, I'm asking you to step into the mind of people that you probably don't identify with at all. But I'm really quite baffled by the thinking behind this. I mean, obviously, political leaders in other countries might invest in maybe a villa in Tuscany or Marbella or something. But there's something pathological about the way we do this here. Can you explain or attempt to explain what's behind it? And with this report that you presented, what are you hoping will be the outcome? You'll recall the Panama Papers scan Scandal that launched an avalanche of tax evasion inquiries and penalties. They've managed to recover over a billion dollars as a result of that expose. What do you hope to happen with your report? Hmm. Um, the interesting thing is the Panama paper and the, pri uh, the Paradise that paper that you actually uh, mentioned about the, the leaks have failed to actually in any way provoke any form of anger here. Uh, Nigerians were named, uh, public officers were named, uh, serving senator, including even the Senate president, uh, as at the time, was also fingered in, in, in those reports. But unfortunately, nothing happened. Uh, the, uh, that's why I said it is not about even the, the political class uh, to make things happen. It, it is actually about us making it a subject of discussion consistently until we get the result. Uh, be mindful the fact of, the, of the fact that it was even the previous government uh, that was actually also uh, in office or even named as at that time with the leak, but the current government failed to act on any of those that were fingered in, in the Paradise or Panama paper. Uh, but with this, uh, we, we, we're happy this is part of what we expect to happen. Uh, we have submitted the report officially to uh, the EFCC and deliberately because we don't want to prejudice, you know, um, the level of investigation by just also naming people. But we provided the necessary lead uh, that would assist um, the government and the law enforcement agencies in tracking the people that are involved. Uh, and we're expecting them to, to work with that leak. Uh, and also that lead to the people that are involved uh, and also the properties that are involved. So the law enforcement agencies have enough power, uh, even without some of this leak and also um, material, uh, to conduct the independent investigation or even summon people that are spe uh, suspected to be living above their legitimate earnings and means. So this is what we want. We want discussions like this. We want Nigerians to start asking questions. We want the uh, foreign countries uh, to also admit the fact that the level of corruption and illicit financial flow from here, um, it is not just about Nigeria, it's also about their system uh, that allows for this. We are talking about between 2004 and 2013, it was alleged that $178 billion left the chores of Nigeria as illicit financial flow. Not just with, those, uh, with the um, public offices uh, and politically exposed persons, including multinational corporations, including the banks and the private sector, including the enablers in our lawyers, uh, our accountants, our estate managers, uh, that are playing the role of enablers uh, for either political exposed persons, uh, some pockets, organizations and companies that are registered in sacred tax havens uh, that would come to Nigeria without any form of legitimate awful investment, but are able to rake in profit and not only take away the profit uh, again uh, without investing anything in the system. And the ones that are investing here are also repatriating illicit fund as part of payment for services that are not even rendered uh, in the country. Uh, and there's just this avalanche uh, of uh, cases uh, that are in the system. So we want this level of discussion. Uh, we need to push the government uh, to act. 
Uh, we, we shouldn't be mounting anti-corruption and deceiving people with the pockets of, you know, bread and butter, uh, you know, corruption fight. But we want to see concrete action uh, okay. from government. I mean, very, very well said. Uh, we have a quick break coming up soon, but I'll just quickly ask you the question. I want to double click on, you know, security forces and officers that own properties in Dubai. You said 13 own over 200 properties. I want to get the picture right. Is it that 13 security officers own over 200 properties? I mean, I'll ask the full game when we come back from the quick commercial break. Just stay with us. Welcome back. I will say hello, Roger Siraj, Executive Director, Human and Environmental Development Agency. Welcome to the program once again, like we're saying. I wanted to be sure. What is it 13, you know, uh, security officers that, that own over 200 properties in Dubai? And what's the value of those properties in dirhams or in pounds, sterling, or dollars? And I want to know if, if they are serving officers or officers that have retired, over 200 properties. I want to double click on that. Can you, can you tell me what your investigation revealed? Okay, we'll, we'll take a quick break and we'll come back to Olai Raju Suraj and, and talk some more about this. Pleasure to have you back. We still have Olai Raju Suraj, Executive Director of Human uh, Environmental Development Agency. So let's go straight to it now. I wanted to be sure, you said 13 security officials have about 200 properties in the United Arab Emirates. I want to know the value of those properties, probably in DRAM and, and dollars. And I want to know if they are still serving officers mm -hmm. or they have left the service. Because that's quite, mm -hmm. I'm curious to know. 13 security officers, over 200 <laughs> property. What a portfolio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, the, the value of the 800 uh, properties involved in Dubai is already put at about $400 million. $400 million. So uh, if you're looking at that over 200, you would also be talking about over $100 million. And that would be going to buy $120 million or above. Um, for the 216 uh, that are associated with the uh, law enforcement offices. Um, this was a product of a leak uh, that happened in the UAE and also part of a report by a researcher, Matthew Page, uh, in, in a report that was supported by Carnegie Endowment in the US. And it had all this uh, information there as well. Uh, but if you remember one of your line uh, medium um, reported at about 2015, 2016, uh, when the immediate past chief of army staff uh, was appointed, there was the leak and the report uh, about his ownership of property in the UAE. I think about three or two properties that were owned uh, by uh, the immediate past chief of army staff, uh, Lieutenant General Buratai. Uh, and that was all over. Unfortunately, there was no investigation from uh, the Nigerian government. Uh, and the only report that we got was more or less that, okay, no, this was bought by the wife, was bought by um, in the name of the wife or, and the rest of that. But there was a direct connection and link uh, with the uh, former chief of army staff in, in that. That was even before uh, this research and other uh, leak that then revealed uh, how we have quite a whole number, uh, an embarrassing state of uh, so many um, Nigerian public office holders and, and law enforcement officers with properties in Dubai. Uh, and the only, the key thing uh, that also made Dubai very attractive is that the operators of the property market uh, actually not only encouraging, but assisting with the illicit financial flow. Uh, so part of our investigation assisted uh, to have uh, our researcher, a lead researcher, disguised to the UAE uh, as someone who is also interested uh, in engaging the property market and investing there. And it was assured uh, that with a million dollar investment uh, or, uh, in, in the UAE, is going to get a golden visa that can cover him and his, uh, and his family uh, to enter UAE at any time and also stay as he wishes. 
And he doesn't need to worry himself if he was going to have issues transferring the money to the UAE because they can assist um, him in doing the transfer. Uh, all what he would need is to get the $1 million cash uh, across to these guys, uh, and then they would, they would deal with the rest. So, we, yes, can you hear me? Yes, we have just about yes, two minutes to go, but we can't have you here, and, uh, you know, we won't get okay. you to comment on stories <laughs> about you in the uh, media. Yesterday, Premium Times had a story on you. Uh, okay. This morning, the cable also had mm -hmm. a story on you. With mm -hmm. regard to mm -hmm. uh, the role that you purportedly mm -hmm. played in the OPL 245 investigation mm -hmm. and the integrity of the evidence right. uh, that you provided, how do you determine the integrity right. of the evidence uh, that you put forward in your report? Uh, because in the OPL 25 case, you are accused of having forged a tape and mm -hmm. an, an email uh, which did not exist. And even when that was stated, mm -hmm. uh, presented as evidence in Milan, uh, in the court. That, that case was struck out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are now being accused of having maligning the reputation mm -hmm. of Mohamed Bilo Adoke, former uh, Attorney General of the Federation. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, so it, they, you can read some mischievous reports in the newspaper, which is very unfortunate. Uh, and that is what we also have to contend with in Nigeria in actually fighting corruption. The two evidence that were mentioned are uh, were never emanated from either myself, my organization, or any other person than the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. Nigeria has challenged the bank for illegally transferring $801 million to Malibu in Nigeria. And the bank has presented as evidence in court in London, saying we got this email from someone who signed off as Mohamed Belo Adoke, giving us the instruction to transfer the money. Not from me, not from my organization. J.P. Morgan filed it in court and said, this is the email upon which we transfer $801 million to Malibu in Nigeria. That is in the court. That is with the UK. The tape that was also mentioned was by a journalist in Italy who, who claimed to have purportedly interviewed a oh. Mohamed Bello Adoke. And that tape surfaced for the first time in the Italian court. No connection with me or my organization. Okay, but because there were no defense uh, on so the I... part of the people that uh, were involved, we, yeah, and that was a very serious indictment. Time. The best they could. Well, we seem to have run out of time. Thank you, Sir Rajmo.